Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. Life is complicated and it's full of challenges and difficulties and joys, things to learn, things to overcome, things to assimilate and things to put in perspective. Many people in this day and age are seeking freedom from addiction, from sin, sometimes from evil because they've dabbled in things they shouldn't, challenges with their finances, anxieties for those of their family and friends who are not believers and they're worried about their eternity. When you're depressed or your marriage is on the rocks, when you need to pray for good health and healing, free from anxiety, stress, and ask God for strength. But it's clear in God's word that there are multitudes of promises made by God to those who believe in him. To help us in our need, to challenge us in our sin, and to set us free from the burdens that so often drag us down. And in God's word, you can see many things which, if you memorize them, pray about them, speak them aloud, telling yourself as much as to the Lord, for those who believe in him, who have a relationship with them in their hearts, and not just religion, a head knowledge, or a practice, we do it in this way, that way, or the other way, or in that building, or this building, or not at all. Those who believe in him, you will then see God move in your life, sometimes to rebuke, sometimes to teach, sometimes to build up and encourage, sometimes to empower us with gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can bring glory to God and it will bring good in our lives. So I thought I'd look at some of these uh, verses which are God's promises and the, there are many. If you search on the internet, I search on the internet and there are lots to choose from. Here's the first lot. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need, you need only to be still. And all too often we think that we have to be the one to work out the problem. And I've discovered when the situation is out of control and I've come to the end of my ability and allow the Lord to intervene, It's incredibly resolved in a much better way than I could have imagined. Because we are in a battle between light and darkness, between good and evil, between self and servanthood, between disobedience and obedience. And we need help because our sinful nature errs towards the darkness and the self-centeredness and not to the light. And God has promised that he will send his Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by Jesus. And when that happens, the Lord will fight for you. Now it's when you have an enemy and you want to lash out and cause them harm. But when we repent, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. We have to pray for our enemies and those who come against us, not lash out. Firstly, because that makes us worse than them or like them. But secondly, it's undermining our relationship with God, who is a God of love. 
Then in Exodus 20, verse 12, one of the commandments is, Honour your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And we all know that none of us is perfect, least of all our father and mother. But we're to love them and honour them in their weakness, in their strength, in their love, in their foolishness. Because they are the ones who are part of us. And we are commanded, not asked, to honour our father and mother. Not moan about them, not speak against them, but to lift them up. Yes, having reality, saying the truth. Yes, they're not perfect, but <laughs> who is? So that living in peace with God and with them, we may live long in the land that the Lord God is giving us. And of course, that's figuratively Israel, but also the land where we live, but our eternal life in the land of Beulah and Hepzibah, the land that is married. Isaiah 40, verse 29. When we struggle with these things, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Scripture also says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong, because I rely upon the strength of the Lord and not on my, upon my own. And the Lord gives strength to those who are weary. Isaiah 40, verse 31, that famous scripture, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. But it's those who hope in the Lord. So every time we look at the promises, it reinforces relationship. Faith in God. Belief in his word that because he has said it, he will do it. And it's not just, oh, I hope that's going to happen. It's putting our trust and our faith in the hope that is before us of eternal life. And as we live a life in relationship with God and through Jesus, we will find that he is faithful and true and is not a man that he should lie. Isaiah 41, verse 10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear does not come from the Lord. Fear comes from the lack of love, because true love casts out all fear, and our Heavenly Father and our Saviour are the epitome of true love. So if we're fearful, and it can be a natural thing, realise it's a lack of faith, a lack of love, and the enemy is exploiting that. But remember that even though it may seem as if everything's falling apart, it says, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, uphold you with my righteous right hand. What better than that? Isaiah 41, 13, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. 
I suppose it's like Peter who got out of the boat to walk on the water towards Jesus and then looked down and saw that he was walking on the water and started to have fear and started to sink. It's keeping our eyes on Jesus. <clears throat> Take hold of his hand. Knowing that he will not leave you. And fear will flee. This is one of my favorites, Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. And all too often in life, we feel as if we're drowning with all the perils and disasters and strains and stresses of the world. People throw things at us to try and knock us off the path. There are people who are there deliberately sent by the enemy to try and seduce us to turn our back on God. And then sometimes the battle is so intense it's like being in a fire. But this scripture clearly says it will not come near us and it will not burn us or set us ablaze. Remember Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego when they were in the fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar could see four, not three, walking in the flames. And he made it hotter because he was so angry with them. And when they came out, they didn't even smell of smoke. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. It is God who is reaching out to you with unfailing love, which cannot be shaken or removed. The covenant made with him when you invite Jesus into your heart as Lord and Saviour is firm and strong. And the Lord has compassion on you because he knows that you're going to fail. He knows you're a work in progress. He knows that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that it's not easy. He knows we'll be tempted. He knows we'll fall over. He knows all these things. Even if the mountains are shaken and the hills are removed, it won't make a difference to his love for you. And he will always be there reaching out his hand to help you, to guide you, to bring healing to you, to strengthen you, to be with you. Another one of my favourite promises, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. And as part of that battle, there will be many weapons used against us. Unfortunately, it's usually by tongues, or actions, or undermining, or gossip, or all of those and more. Innuendo, falseness, often by those who are nearest and dearest to you, or even, God help us, from within the church. But here, none of those weapons formed against us will prevail. Now, it doesn't say that we won't go through trials and tribulations. They won't prevail. We will walk in the victory of the Lord at the end of it. 
and we will also refute every tongue that accuses us. You know, I went through a situation where somebody accused me of something, and to be honest, I didn't want to say anything about it, but it came to a head and I had to, and I told the truth. And that person reacted in, in a certain way with witnesses there. And I was vindicated because exactly what I was saying was spoken out of those, that person's mouth. And they refuted everything with their own words. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And this vindication comes for those who are followers and servants of the Lord. So if you want that to be part of your life, you have to be a servant of the Lord. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, we all need that, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And when the Holy Spirit was sent and touches our lives, he brings all wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment to know the difference between good and evil, between things of the Lord and things of the devil. So if you lack wisdom, or you lack knowledge or understanding, or you lack that relationship with God, ask him. For it will be given to you if you ask with a right heart. And continuing that theme, James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But submit means that we have to be obedient and prayerful and not proud and puffed up, but have a servant heart, a loving heart, led by the Holy Spirit, guided by his promptings, guided by his call to repentance. Rejoicing in the forgiveness. And then we can resist the devil. And he will flee from us. Remember, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert, after 40 days of fasting, the devil tested him with many things. And I'm sure he was very hungry when he was tempted to turn the stones into bread, and he could have done it. But what did he do? He answered by using scripture. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then when he was tempted to throw himself down from the highest parapet, you shall not judge or test the name of the Lord your God. And that's what we need to do when we come under continual attack, either in our minds or through situations. We should look at these promises and more and stand upon them and declare them and speak them out. So we're speaking them out just so that we can hear them. No. But so the Lord can hear them, the enemy hears them, and I hear them. And it builds my faith and trust in God. And as I say, our hearts need to have a very short account. And we need to repent a lot. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgive our sins and purify us from all righteousness. This is why Jesus came. 
He came and poured out his blood so that the burden of sin and death will be broken over our lives. And to come into the presence of a holy God, we need that blood. We need that forgiveness. We need that transforming power. So as you re read God's word and are challenged by things that it says we should do or not do, repent. Not just a stock answer prayer, but from the heart. And by building that relationship with God, he will direct you through the Holy Spirit and convict you of your sin. And forgive. And then that burden will roll away. And you'll be free. And a little bit closer. To the Lord whose love. Is undiminished. And unquenchable. So until next time. It's a big God bless you from me Greg. Bye.